The last but not the least, it's Michelle McMahon. She's a freelance sports broadcaster, right now working with the Big Ten Network, as well as with the NBC Sports Chicago. Michelle? All right. Uh, so my unconventional journey is similar to Sarah's of, I was at a point in college where I had no idea what I wanted to do. I think we hit that point a lot of times when we do feel like we found what we want to do, then maybe it's not as fulfilling. Uh, but I'll back up. How did I get here? Well, my first job to get to sports broadcasting was actually selling freight to truck drivers. Not very conventional, not really something that I ever anticipated doing. Um, I went to Michigan, especially um, with that degree. I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I played volleyball there, so that was kind of my entry into sports. So when I graduated college, I knew I loved sports. I, broadcasting seemed like a really cool option, but pretty much everyone said that I couldn't do it because everyone wants to do that. And so I kind of set a dream, but also kind of let it sit there for a little bit before I actually went after it wholeheartedly. So. Um, I knew I didn't want to start in a small market in the middle of nowhere. I, uh, I'm a city girl at heart, so I figured Big Ten Network is in Chicago. Why don't I just start in Chicago with a sales job, make a living that way, but also fulfill my passion of broadcasting, see where this dream could maybe take me. So um, I started with a logistics company working sales. It was a seven to five job, 120 cold calls per day calling truck drivers and trying to sell them freight, which was a, an extremely invaluable experience and it was humbling too to also learn you know, what the typical nine to five sales job looks like. Um, from there, I uh, was a volleyball analyst for Big Ten Network. That was kind of my way in. And even Big Ten Network told me no initially that I was not experienced enough, um, that who is this girl just graduating out of college and what does she want to do for our network kind of thing. But I was like, I can do it, just trust me. Like, let me come in for an audition, and, I'll, and I was like, at least if I suck, we, you know, I want to know that too up front, so if, let's save each other time at this point. Uh, anyways, nor here nor there. Um, that audition ended up going well, got me like one or two on-air opportunities, um, so that was that. So I was balancing sales with broadcasting, and then eventually learned that um, they wouldn't want me to continue doing broadcasting, so I had to find another sales job, obviously, to make a living to fund my broadcasting passion. And now that I think back on it, it wasn't really fair to the companies, but I learned. Um, then I picked up a medical device sales job thinking, okay, this might be the, the thing that takes me away from broadcasting. In the back of my mind, I knew, I knew I just wanted to do broadcasting, but I wasn't sturdy enough to take that leap of faith yet. So picked up this other sales job. I could work from home. And I, in my mind, I'm like, perfect. I can work around my broadcast schedule. I can do three volleyball games here and then uh, you know, commute to Kentucky or wherever I need to go. And, and, and I was managing the entire Midwest territory at 24 years old. No idea what I was doing. I would walk into neuro ICU to sell them my little medical device and was talking to neurosurgeons who had been in school longer than I'd been alive at that point. So they were looking at me like I had seven eyes. Uh, I, I learned very quickly it wasn't my calling. It wasn't my passion. I, I did thoroughly believe in the device and I wanted to help people. So that part was fulfilling, but the fulfilling part uh, didn't outweigh my passion. I woke up every day. I remember the pit that I felt in my stomach where I was just not answering to what I felt like my calling was. And that was my passion for sports broadcasting, whether it was possible or not. Uh, and then another anecdote to get you to where I am now. Um, I remember being on my couch, and I think it was 2013, working this medical device sales job, watching the Blackhawks in the playoffs in the Stanley Cup finals, looking at the TV and, and looking at my agenda the next week where I had five different states and a gazillion different hospitals that I was jammed up and, and trying to uh, go see the next week, and I was like, "This is th that was kind of my turning point." I looked at the TV screen. I'm like, "Gosh, I want to be there. I want to be. I want to be covering the stand. Like, I want to talk. To, I want to tell the stories of these athletes. I was an athlete at heart, so I, I feel like there's another human side of this. Um, so that kind of, I guess, planted the seed of where I am now. Um, and then the another fork in the road presented itself. My medical device sales manager saw very quickly that I was more passionate about broadcasting than I was sales, and she made me make a choice. And I'm so glad that she did. And I had no guarantees of anything. I told my parents, I said, I'm quitting my job in five months. I'm going to save up as much as I can. And I'm going to jump towards this broadcasting thing. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. I have no plan. But this is my goal. So I'm going to do it. And fortunately, I had a family that supported me. Um, and so if I'm talking too long, you just have to tell me because I'm long-winded. So try to make it short. So anyways, I quit my job. And then I started. I didn't know where to start. But I knew hockey was a sport that I knew and that a lot of other females or males weren't trying to cover at Big Ten Network, so I pitched a project to my boss. I said, here's a low-risk project. 
that I can do. If you let me sit in the hosting desk, because they kind of pigeonholed me as just a volleyball analyst at this point. They didn't see me as anything other than that. So I said, okay, how about this? I'll produce this little hockey report thing and merge our audiences because the Big Ten just launched a conference. Some, our fans from Penn State and Michigan State and whatever might not know about each other. So how about this? I'll put together this little Big Ten hockey report. I'll host it. I'll do all the. I'll even find my talent for it, my hockey analyst, if you let me sit in the hosting chair and show you what I can do and show myself what I can do. That ended up um, doing well, and it was digital, so it was low risk for them, and I wasn't on TV per se, but that's what led to my break with the Carolina Hurricanes, which is an NHL team down south. From there, so once I committed, it was like lightning speed. From there, I got plucked out of a contract after a year to go to NHL Network. Um, so I made it to the national level in two years, which was crazy. And then a year after that, uh, my next con came, the Blackhawks, which was, as now it comes full circle, of that opportunity arose. Big Ten Network in addition to that. So being a, a football sideline reporter with Big Ten Network was also uh, a lofty goal that I had set, but I had to earn the right to come back in that capacity in a sense. So they had a full-time opportunity, freelance full-time. So that's how I'm able to do um, reporting and hosting for Big Ten Network and now the Blackhawks where I once sat on my couch longing to be a part of their uh, journey. So that's kind of where I'm at. Now I'm still a freelancer. I live uh, gig to gig and year to year, but we'll see where the next adventure takes me. That's where I'm at right now.